Uh, so this is Blackout Poetry um, for Boca de Oro. Thank you for coming. I'm going to share my screen in just a second um, for uh, some presentation. I'm going to show you guys a, a video um, and then continue back into the presentation for a little bit. Um, so welcome and let's get started. Well, now I've lost my share my screen button. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. So what is blackout poetry? Um, my definition is that blackout poetry is the creative process of selecting words within an existing text to form a new and original poem. So usually when I do a blackout poetry workshop in person, it looks like this. I provide all of the materials that would be needed. Um, so it's called, what's called a make and take. So I bring all of the supplies, there's markers, there's you know camaraderie while people are, are doing their work. Um, and then they have a lovely poem to take with them when they go. Um, so right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about the, the form and the format. And then I'm gonna provide you with resources uh, in a digital fashion uh, so that you can create a poem of your own. So if you have print resources at home that you can use, you're welcome to use those. Or if you have, um, if you prefer to use the digital materials that I'm going to provide, you can do that instead. Um, so the basic process, first step is just to take your print resource. Um, it could be a newspaper, it could be a book, it could be a magazine. You're gonna choose the words that will make up your poem. So you can circle them or put a box around them. And then everything else that's on the page, you black that out. And that can look in a lot of different ways. So you can color it in, you can draw images over top of the words, you can paint over everything else, except your selected words that make up your poem. Now, if you are accessing this later on, there is an Instagram link and a Pinterest link to more examples and more step-by-step -step detailed instructions if you want to refer back to those uh, later as well. Um, and in the bottom corner of the slide, uh, there's a bit.ly link to actually access this entire presentation if you want to do that. So that's bit.ly slash Boca Blackout. So you can access the entire presentation that way as well. So why, why do we do blackout poetry? There's a number of different reasons. Uh, it could be a really great writing warm up to get your creative juices flowing um, before doing something else. You can create an entire masterpiece of a poem within one single blackout poetry page. And I've also had um, teachers use this as an assignment. And I wanna show you that as an example as well, because I know we have some teachers in the group. Um, so this was a project where students were assigned to read a scientific article about moths and how the moths use color adaptation um, to uh, protect themselves from predators. Uh, so the students had to create a blackout poem that showed what they learned from the reading. So you can see from all four of these examples, they've circled their words and they're talking about the camouflage being advantageous and natural selection and predators. Um, but then they're also using visual imagery to demonstrate the content of their poem with the moths and the birds. One of them has a, a reference to pollution because that's part of the article. One of them has um, the skull because the, the, the death um, that the moths are trying to avoid, um, et cetera. So the blackout poetry can be used for, for a wide range of, um, of activities. All right, so I am going to show you guys a video demo of my process that I use to do this digitally. So normally we have 
on my table, there would be all of these books and people could rip pages right out of the book. Um, and this one actually people were cutting specific words out um, similar to, to like in the movies where the, they make the kidnap ransom note, they would cut out individual words from the, the pages as well. Um, so what I did to transform this for the virtual event uh, is to, to create a video of a digital format of this. So later on in the presentation, I'm going to have some digital screenshots of books that I'm providing for you guys. And this is what I did. So I took my image of my book and I pulled it into Google Drawing. Now, if you have other um, software that you would wanna use besides Google Drawing, you can. So if you have um, Paint or any kinds of creative software, you can use this, but you're using your book page as your base image. So then what I did is I took the shape feature and I just put shapes around those book, the words that I wanted to use. And once I had drawn the first shape and gotten the border weight that I want and the color that I want, uh, then I would just copy paste that shape over and over again, one for each of the words um, that I wanted to use. I'm just going to put this on, on fast forward so it goes a little bit faster. Um, so then I move my boxes to each of the words that I want to use. And then because I wanted to make sure people could read it smoothly in order, I drew lines from box to box to box in the order that I wanted the poem to be read. And then I changed my line weight and my line color to match the boxes that I used. And then I do that in my second paragraph again. And this time I changed the color because it's kind of a, a stanza of the poem. So I changed colors with my changing of stanzas. So I have red in my first stanza. I use black in my second stanza. And then um, I did the lines again to connect them together. And then I used purple for my third and last stanza. and connected those together. Now, the next step is to block out every word that I'm not using. So what I did for that is I just inserted some shapes and I copy pasted a whole bunch of that shape and then I moved the shapes around to block out the words that I didn't want. And for my first part, um, it's talking about um, being defensive. Um, so I put sharp, shapes. So my, my shape that I'm choosing um, has to do with the concept that I'm talking about in my stanza. So then my second stanza, I'm talking about power and specifically power in a hierarchical sense. So I used a triangle because a triangle represents a hierarchy. And then in my last one, I'm thinking about um, equality and imagination. So I wanted to use a circle to represent togetherness and wholeness. So I chose symbols that went with my words. I highlighted my words throughout the page and connected them all together. So that's just one example of a digital way that you could adapt this process of um, blackout poetry. Okay, so I showed you the video. Now I have in this Google slideshow, I have a whole series of pages that you can use to accommodate your own digital version. Or if you have pages with you, wherever you're viewing this from, you can just use a page that you have. So if you have a newspaper, if you have a magazine, if you have a book, um, you can use that. Otherwise I have pages from some books on my shelves. I have some pages from some magazines and I have screenshots from some books. So there's a whole series of pages. Um, if you go to this bit.ly slash book of blackout, you can pick any one of these pages that you want and do the digital process. Or if you have a text with you uh, in your space that you're at, you can do the physical process. So we're gonna have workshop, workshop time. I'm gonna work on one while you guys are working on one. 
and then hopefully we'll have a chance for folks to share out at the end. So I'm going to stop sharing for the moment. I'm going to put that bit.ly into the chat so that it's really easy for you guys to get to it. Uh, and then we can go ahead and get started with the workshop. Um, and feel free to ask any questions um, or ask for feedback from your fellow participants if you want at any time. Okay, so there's that link in the chat. Um, if you want to follow that to the presentation, that's gonna have all of those images in there of um, texts that you can use for this process. All right, so one of those pages is um, from this book, which is Great Canadian Short Stories. Um, so I'm going to tear out a page of my book right now. Um, and for those of you who do not know me, I'm a librarian. You may think, why in the world would librarians be ripping up books? Um, but what we know as librarians is that books are meant to be used if the books are no longer being used, use them for something else. Use them to make art, use them to make crafts. All right, so I'm gonna put myself on mute for a little bit too as I'm, as I'm working. And if you have any questions, then I'm gonna go ahead and turn my mic right back on to answer those. Or if you have anything that you wanna say or ask in the chat, uh, you can do that as well. All right, so I just went through my page and I have selected out my words. And now I'm gonna start on my art part where I am going to cover up the words with 
other stuff.
All right, so I started my covering with my design. It's not fully covered, but it's a long way towards it, right? So I'm gonna read out my poem, and then if anybody else wants to share how far they, how far along they got, that would be wonderful. Um, so the page that I tore out um, was a short story by Margaret Lawrence called A Gourd Full of Glory. So my poem that I selected goes like this. Queen mother, embroidered robes draped to catch the eye, tree roots, gourd spoons, calabash and pot, rich. Marvelous shoulders, hardy arms, fashioned of power and glory. And I was going kind of for a uh, henna mandala kind of look with my doodling. It's not perfect because I'm not, I don't think of myself as an artist at all, um, but it's, it's a fun way to, to use our creativity. Uh, does anybody else want to be brave and share theirs? Okay, Jen. I see your hand. Are you gonna go ahead and unmute yourself if you want to share? I need like maybe two minutes. I'm almost there, but okay. I love okay, wonderful. Yeah.
You ready? Go ahead. I think I'll probably get lost on the way because <laughs> I, I haven't really done anything yet. I just, um, this is just the book I had in my backpack. It's uh, Stephen King on writing. Wonderful. Yeah, fun. I've never read it. It was a first. So um, one moment I had insight. I spent days thinking, working, but that was too good to be true, too good, and I knew it. Um, I was a bomb, I was all the problems. Uh, the only fix was a lot easier by blowing me to smithereens. I don't know, I'm missing a couple words, but I'm working on it. Awesome, I love it, thank you for sharing. Thanks. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm not much of an artist, maybe I'll have one of my kids follow explosion, but yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's very fun. I love doing this kind of thing. Wonderful. Does anybody else want to have a go at sharing? I'll share mine. Wonderful. Thank you. I uh, haven't finished the artwork yet, but go me. <laughs> um, so expression a figure was revealed a unique discussion temporary choice fixated on place i like it what uh was your source material um this is a book on a universal design for learning so wonderful and oh, wow. this page it says this chapter is called the burnt banana <laughs> <laughs> okay. That actually makes me want to read the book now. <laughs> All right. I started adding a little color to mine. So I put some green in my leaves and red on a flower and on a pomegranate. And there's some little gold highlights in there now too. Just continuing with the decorative element. Thank you, Tamara. I love this so much. I have to go, but man, fabulous job. And I, I was working, Amy, you'll appreciate this. I was using it at one of my documents for NISL <laughs> to try to create a poem. I understand. I'm facilitating and I have to get ready for you all this weekend too. <laughs> I'm reading and, and I'm creating poetry at the same time. <laughs> Thank you. We should have ripped out a page of, t of the leader book there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, okay, I was told I, I need to take a snapshot of this session. So here we go. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Robin. Right. See you on the circuit. See you again, Tammy. I can just say, hi, Tammy, I miss hi. you. I miss this you. is so wonderful. Oh, <laughs> and a um, little Godinus reunion here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's so wonderful. And I've wanted to do this with you for years. And I taught it with elementary kids in special studio. And we took, it's a whole long thing, but they had old books and we drilled holes in the back of them and bolted them to the museum walls so they were hanging out so people could see them. That's cool. It was fun. I'd love to see how everyone's work turns out. Yeah. And shading uh, yeah. with a Sharpie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If anybody does want to share and send me a picture of your final project, that would be wonderful. Um, so I'm going to put my email in the chat and it's also probably on my presenter bio stuff somewhere on the Boca webpage. Um, but it's tamara.davis at sausd.us. If you want to just send me the picture, then I'll collect everything that was done during this workshop. Um, and include it um, at the end of the slideshow 
because you guys have the link to the slideshow and I'll put that in the chat again as well. Um, and then you can see anything that folks shared out. Bitly slash Boca Blackout. And I'll put mine in too. All right. Uh, Josue, we had a 7.30 stop time that we're over by a little bit, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close there then. Thank you all for coming and for participating. And hopefully you got to exercise some creativity uh, and enjoy yourself. Thank you.